Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Lifestyle Academy at magicbrad.com. And I've got Marielle Miller on the line, and she is, where, were you, where are you located? You're on the East Coast, right? Yeah, I'm in New Jersey. New Jersey. I like the East Coast because people say what they're going to do, and then they do it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> in the Midwest, they say what they're going to do, and then they say they got to think about it. <laughs> Anyways, so I don't do these very long because everybody's got this precious commodity of time, so we don't want to take too much of people's time, but we do want to get to know who you are and what you do. So that's the first question. Who are you? You married? You got kids? You single? What? Who are you? So, so I, uh, yeah, Mario Miller. So I'm in New Jersey. Uh, I have two beautiful teenagers, 14 and 16. So they're pretty talented and fun, and it's tough. The teenage years are tough, but we're <laughs> making it through. Um, and I've been in franchising for about 27 years. So after a whole big in and out career of corporate and different consulting things, um, since 2004, what I do is I work with individuals who are curious about um, business ownership and we teach them and coach them through a process of understanding of the franchise landscape and how to find a really good one. Oh, sure. I was, years ago, I was thinking about a Subway franchise because that was the big hot one that was, that was going on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you kind of give people a little bit of uh, insight of what to expect when they're getting into that kind of thing. Because somebody might think, I got $25,000 saved up. I want to buy a franchise. And you go, well, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, we start, you know, we start by figuring out what is like the right business for you. Is, is business, owner, first of all, back it up. Is business ownership a good idea for you? Right. And then, it, oh, you know, is franchising a way that could possibly uh, be a vehicle to your goals? Then we outline the goals. We figure all that out. We look at the ideal business situation for you, which is different for everyone. And so long as that's not a crazy unicorn, it actually exists. Then I go shopping across about 34 different categories that franchising is doing very well in. And we will bring over to you some top performing companies and then teach you how to investigate them and how to look under the hood and how to figure out, you know, uh, how much money you could make and what would be the quality of your life with that business in it. Got it. Now, sometimes people think, well, I'm going to get into this business because it's really a good one and it makes a lot of money. But don't you also have to do something that you are passionate about because you got to know that you're going to be spending 10 hour, 12 hour days with it. So you better love it. You know, that's a great point. And here's the way that I kind of try to make sense of that point. People think they have to fall in love with the product, but you really don't. You know, you could be in a business that is a shredding business. It's not exciting to shred paper, you know, but what the passion needs to be centered around is building something substantial, penetrating your market, building a team, growing and developing people, you know, being an expert in your field, you know, connecting with others, giving a good quality service or product to someone. Right. The passion is around that. The product or service can be relatively anything across any different category. And um, you can be very, very well. See, that's it's always interesting talking to other people because, you know, I think that when you do something, you got to do do whatever you love. But you're right. If, if your thing is about team building and you love getting, you know, advertising and marketing and it really doesn't matter what the product is. Like if you're uh, into cars, maybe you want to do an auto shop. If you're into food, you might want to do a subway or something like that. But but you're right. Yeah, maybe it maybe it doesn't matter what it is because if you just love team building and motivation and inspiration, then you're you're in your passion. Yeah, sometimes it works. Like you might be a fitness buff, and uh, you have the skills to be a manager of a fitness operation. So sometimes about twenty percent of the time it works that way, but about eighty percent of the time, you know, I like chocolate cake, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm competent in running a bakery. Because right. it's, you know, it's very different than eating chocolate cake, right? Yeah, you so eat yourself out of business, right? Yeah, exactly, right, yeah. <laughs> so I'm always kind of curious of, do you, you're, it looks like you're at your home now. Do you just have a home office or do you have a, a regular brick and mortar type office or where do you do your work? Yeah, I've had a home office since uh, 2004 when I, when I changed from corporate America to becoming um, an entrepreneur in private practice. So I've been on my own. And, you know, that's not for everyone either. Right. There are a lot of challenges in a home-based business. So you really have to determine, like, what is the right environment for each person to succeed in? Because I always say everybody could be average at anything, but for you to be a top performer, you have to pay to your strengths. Right. we got to figure that out. 
Yeah, I've been self-employed all my life, so I'm sort of molded that way, but I know what you mean. Some people just got to have that, you know, I got to go and punch a clock and stay there, and that's what they got to do. Or some people might get distracted with, I think I'll watch, uh, you know, soap operas during the day or something, and you need that discipline to actually keep going. Or you might have children that are in the summer when they're home, you're going to be pulling your hair out because they're, they're home. So you might need to get an office. So you might need to have a separate space to have an off-limits off place so the kids can't come and disrupt when you're on, on the phone with a client or whatever. Some people you know, need to get up every day and shower and get a suit on. Other people right. need to be with other people or they get exhausted by being alone. So it's all the combination of you know, what's your ideal environment. So that's something you do with your prospective clients is kind of work it through and say, are you sure this is what you want to do? Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we go all the way through, you know, living a day in the life of a franchise owner so that you know, you know, what you're getting into. So then are you uh, just the United States or do you go into Canada and Mexico and other places? Or you, where do you focus? Yeah, I focus in the United States. We have affiliates that we collaborate with um, in um, all different countries. You know, Canada is definitely very popular for franchising and some other countries as well. Mm -hmm. But my focus is the U.S., the whole country we work in. Got it. Well, before I ask my favorite question, I want to find out how to get a hold of you. How do we find you in case someone says, I want to start a franchise and I want to talk to this lady because she knows what she's talking about. How do oh, we how do get a hold of you? So my website is thefranchiseadvisor.com. So I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah. You can find me on LinkedIn. If you put in Mario Miller and then the word franchise, I will come up. Or you can call me at 732-298-0900. Anytime, I'll be happy to talk about franchising. So the website is thefranchiseadvisor.com. Yep. That's that's pretty easy to remember. And I will put that on the, uh, where I put this out, I put it on blogs and propagate it out to YouTube and all places, and I will link that in there. And then when you see it floating around on the Internet, if you could like, comment, and share on it, and anybody that's listening, if you could do the same, that's how this stuff all works. So here's my favorite question, and that's the big W, the big Y. Why are you doing this, and why aren't you like a yoga instructor or a ski instructor or, or an elementary school teacher or, or a martial yeah. arts competitor? Why aren't you fighting MMA? MMA? <laughs> no, that's a great question. But I, I, I actually found my passion and I found my purpose. It took me years to figure it out. Um, you know, growing up, I watched my mom, and she worked three jobs to support three kids on her own. And she was never happy. And I remember as a kid thinking there has to be a way to help people be happy at work. So I went to college and I got a degree in organizational change, a master's degree in organizational change. And I did counseling consulting stuff and helped companies change and align people to their jobs. And I did all that in franchise for a really long time. And then I realized when my kids were two and four, one day that I wasn't willing to sacrifice my life with them for the money at corporate. So mm -hmm. I quit and I started my practice. And I was committed at that point to entrepreneurship. And today I know that my purpose is to give children their parents back through entrepreneurship because it is the Two American dream and kids need their parents at home. Yep, I've got a friend that. Oh, I get all emotional when yeah. I say that. Well, I've got a friend that uh, lives in Thailand. She's lived in uh, Puerto Rico, and she travels all over the, the world. And her thing was she got out of corporate because she didn't want to leave her daughter at home. So she just threw in the towel and said, I'm doing an online thing, and that's what she does. And her daughter now is entrepreneurial, and she's got her own fashion line, and she's only wow. like 15 or something like that. So I'm trying to get my kids to catch the entrepreneurial bug, but um, I don't know if it's in them, you know? I don't know. Well, you never know if you put the right thing in front of them and just realize that, you know, if you like gaming, maybe you should just create a blog for gaming and monetize it. Now you're making money and you're gaming. So maybe it isn't the business kind of thing. There's, it's fascinating how many different ways there are to make money these days by just downloading the Uber app and you can start driving. Or if you want to do an Airbnb and rent out your house, it's amazing how many different ways. And, you know, in franchising, there are like 4,000 different companies. Sure. There are so many opportunities. I really believe there's something for everyone. Yeah, I thought about doing like a Blue Bunny ice cream kind of thing and just drive around in an ice cream truck yeah. in the summer. <laughs> and I'm 
could do that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to sign this off and beam it up to the universe. And if you want to stay on here, we'll chat a little further. Other than that, I'm going to close this off, put it in the can, and shoot it out to the world so they can find it. What a pleasure to meet you. Thanks so much. For you too. Thank you very much for being on Synergy Cafe. Peace. Bye now.